Hello everyone, this is Katie. Today I've got another one and a half hour drawing that I've squashed into 30 minutes for you. Um, today I'm feeling inspired by light. You can see on the left hand side, this is a reference picture of Kasia. It's from Bryce Cameron Liston's Procreate um, photo references. He's got some great pictures and I was really inspired by the way that light is shining through Kasia's hair. It reminds me a lot of Malcolm Baum's paintings you can see on the right hand side there where he's really the the model's hair is almost catching fire with the light shining through so I was kind of inspired to, to try and see if I can capture that in a sketch um, at some point I am going to paint this or have a go at painting it but for now I thought I'd just try and capture it in in just a quick sketch so I can kind of get my head around the the effect the light has sort of streaming through um, around this girl's face and through her hair I'm taking a bit of a different approach today, so I'm really starting off with a teeny tiny sketch. I'm using the, the flat painting streamer brush from Jing Sketch. I'll talk about this in a bit, but I have got a recommendation from an alternative brush if you don't want to pay for it. Um, but really starting off with a tiny, tiny drawing with very thick lines, smudging it out, making it a little bit bigger, doing the drawing again. And I'll repeat that a few times until I'm really up close. So this is really taking to extreme the idea of start, you know, big shapes, small size, and, and kind of working down towards the detail. So by sort of starting with a really tiny, tiny canvas that I'm working on and a big thick brush, I'm really forcing myself not to kind of dive into the details, just to look at the picture as a whole, how it's composed in the frame, try and capture the big shapes and not get too lost in the detail. So that's what I'm doing at the moment with these shapes. Is I, I'm not even at the block it in stage at the moment, I'm just kind of trying to figure it all out. So each time I'm, I'm um, knocking it back with the, the smudge brush, I'm using the Painting Wisp brush, which is another brush by Jing Sketch. Again, I'll make some recommendations in a minute about an alternative um, smudge brush that you can use that isn't a paid brush if you don't want to fork out for um, the the complete collection that Jing Sketch offers. So now I've kind of nailed down I guess the initial sketch I'm just working on you know I've got a nice rough outline of where things are I've got a bit of tone down already that I can start working into so this is kind of the, the stage where we're refining the edges of those shadow shapes to achieve our block in. So really trying to get my head wrapped around where those edges are landing so that I can start blocking in the, the colour and, and figure out really whether I've got things in the right place or not. I think they're about right because I did start in such a tiny little drawing that I'm, I'm pretty sure that I've not made a major mistake. But I mean... It's a portrait and we as we all know portraits you know it, it, there's not a lot of <laughs> there's not a lot of wiggle room in terms of ability to get things right um it's kind of got to be within a few millimeters in general so the eraser i've just used the same brush for the eraser um i'm using the eraser very sparingly because i've smudged out the drawing i've established this really nice kind of soft tone um, and I'm I'm kind of working into that. So the minute I come with an eraser, I'm taking that away. So really, I'm saving the eraser for when I really want to pick out these highlights or if I'm just going to apply it very lightly with a very soft touch just to knock back colour very slightly. So I think trying to use a lot of control here with your Apple Pencil to um, to get, you know, to not lose that nice ground that we've got <clears throat> in the picture and you can see it there where I tried to you know erase the eyelid so it doesn't take a lot to kind of knock it back too much so just being very careful and avoiding you know instead of instead of going in with eraser I think can I just smudge it instead um, and 99% of the time smudging does the job just fine so you can see I'm still working on those edges so I'm trying to get the sense of the where those shadow shapes fall the sense of the 3d form I find sometimes I can't really figure out where stuff is wrong until I've done that block in, until I've sort of nailed down the edges of those shadow shapes a little bit and then started to block in the colour. And then at that stage it becomes a little, I think it just becomes a little bit more obvious to a viewer where things aren't, aren't quite right. <clears throat> So important to get the back of the head in the right place. I think if you if you don't get the shape of the head right, then it does 
look a bit rubbish um so important to and if you can't eyeball it then just try measuring use your um use something to measure up from say the chin to the forehead and just double check that that matches the the width from the forehead to the back of the head or you know whatever you measure measure as being the equivalent distance vertically versus horizontally to make sure that you've kind of captured those dimensions correctly i think a lot of people have a tendency to either squash or pull things so and to kind of distort the dimensions very slightly so i'm going in very gently with a bit of eraser to pull out those highlights she's kind of got a highlight obviously on her nose and reaching across to highlight eyelid there's a bit of a highlight on her top lip and a bit of highlight on her brow it kind of looks like her chin has a highlight but it really doesn't it's just because the area around it is very dark so resisting the temptation to go in and pull that highlight off of her chin and then finally obviously she's got this bright lamp behind her so you can really go in with an eraser and refine the edge of her face um, as this is a profile it's very important to get that the profile of her face right um so yeah just using a razor to try and capture that and, and get that light in behind her face so you can see i'm not really zooming in on the picture on the left hand side yet i'm really trying to stop myself from disappearing into the details you can go in really zoom in and see you know, what parts of the face is the light shining through almost like, you know, like the on the on the reference picture of the painting by Malcolm, you can see there's certain parts of the face, like, for example, the nose where, you know, it's just, you know, there's there's not a lot of like bones and flesh underneath the nose. So to some extent, the light is almost shining through the nose and bouncing around the lips and, and shining through the mouth. And then sometimes when your ears in front of the light, that the light will shine straight through the ear. So it's capturing that idea of transparency around the different features of the face that makes it look so good so I think when you're doing a, a copy or a study like this you can really go in really like zoom it right in and have a look at what's happening on those edges so where is the light is there a very sharp line around the profile and where is there a much more soft line or a lost line so I think it's avoid. It's really tempting to go in on those details. I absolutely love going into those details and will do later. But I think at this stage of the drawing, I'm trying not to go in too much. I'm more trying to get that contour around the edge of her face correct before I start noodling on, on how the light is shining through and around her skin. So working with these brushes reminded me a little bit of working of the portrait I did of Harry Styles. So this brush has a really juicy, grainy texture to it, which I love. So you can really play off using the smudge brush and the brush to kind of alternate between a very smooth texture and a very grainy texture. So I think it's important to make sure you preserve some of that grainy texture in places and you don't over blend. So maybe just focusing on blending around very sharp edges and blending on very smooth areas of uh, Kazia's face. So you can see, for example, her nose is very smooth. Um, you can just see that from the highlights. So, I mean, it's okay to really blend that, but then although her nose is very smooth, because it is so smooth, the highlight is really reflecting on the pores of her skin. So that highlight is very sharp. So again, it's like balancing sharpness and softness always look for the sharpness and softness in every single area and that's how you get a good picture <clears throat> so now I was pretty okay with the profile and the contour of her profile so I have started going into the detail of how the light bounces around her face a little bit um, not for too long though you can see I've kind of got a grip on myself and gone off to do um, some of the areas that are less developed so you can see her eyes really blocky at the moment so yeah that I'm going in on there now just to kind of develop that a little bit more um. <clears throat> when you zoom in close enough when you've got a really good quality photograph like I've got on the left hand side here and you zoom in close enough I think it's really good to do studies of these pictures sometimes because you come to realizations like no even the hardest lines that we think we see in this picture aren't really hard if you go close enough up so actually trying to 
minimise the number of lines or edges that are very, very crisp. And even the ones that do seem quite crisp, maybe just knocking those back a little bit with um, a blender just so that they're less harsh. So really kind of making a very careful judgment about where you need to use those, those crispest lines with the most contrast. Like for example, like if we, if we look under her chin, you can see right under the bottom of her chin, um, where it joins her neck, it is very sharp and the darkest section is almost the bottom edge where it, it, it's against the light. But then if you go round to, to her chin, to the ball of her chin, actually, if you were to zoom in close enough, you would see that where her chin is against the light, the light is almost spilling around her chin. So it doesn't have that crispness of edge that it does under her chin. The edge is a lot softer. The light is coming around and actually maybe the darkest part of that shadow around her chin is the bit on the inside edge rather than the outside edge. So it's little nuances like that that you can really kind of noodle on and disappear into. And you'll see that I do this um, in one of the later videos. <coughs> So now I'm really looking at how I can capture the impression of that hair through the light. I think perhaps I'm, you know, well now I look at Malcolm's painting on the right hand side, perhaps I got a little bit too literal here. Um, but yeah, so just trying to figure out how I can get the impression of that light streaming through the hair in this medium, which is a very compressed range so I'm using actually kind of almost like a sepia brown so I'm not getting be able to get all the way to the very darkest dark so my darkest tone isn't pure black it's not pure concentrated dark color so that limits me to a certain extent with the range I can get when I'm doing this drawing So now we're back in the refining stage, so I'm probably going to talk a little bit less. Um, it's really those fine adjustments, really looking at the picture on the left hand side and I'm just adjusting it and refining it so that it goes from something that's a little bit sketchy to something that is just a bit more cohesive. So yeah, I mean it's doing things like sort of softening those shadow edges pulling out some of the elements like I can see a bit of light bouncing off the top of our eyelids so capturing that um <clears throat> I've not got her mouth quite right but I think I'll go and fix that in a minute so you get to watch that and just really do those last minute refinements to get it to a place where I want it to to be before I stop I do really love this picture on the left. I do really want to try an oil painting of it, um, probably leaning he heavily on Malcolm's work. Um, because I don't think you can really, you can get elements of it in a sketch like this, um, but you can't really capture that kind of fiery glow of the light behind her, you know, this kind of sketchy medium. I suppose I could have sort of laid in a ground in the background so I could, and maybe I'll try try that kind of a little bit later when I come back to the sketch of putting in like a ground, a dark ground, so that really kind of sets off that bright light that we can see and then maybe using that to pick out some of the those wispy hairs that I've got around her head. Um, yeah, so maybe that's something I'll sort of play with later. This is really an experiment though. I, when I started this exercise, I wasn't even sure where I would go with it. I spent a little bit of time building up a cool background and I was thinking of doing a digital painting that would look a lot more like Malcolm's work. But actually I kind of ended up having so much fun with this um, this style of drawing that I just kind of kept on going with it really to see where it would take me. So I think some of these drawings, I don't, I don't really have expectations when I set out. I have ideas, but I just kind of go with the flow rather than kind of forcing myself to do a particular thing. I just see where the drawing takes me really. So again, this is really, this is really me practicing. So it's not, it's nothing that I'm gonna do anything special with. I would just call this a extended practice or studio guess, um, just to kind of develop some ideas, just kind of really observe the drawing. Um, I think e even if you want to paint this picture, I think doing a study like this, where you're kind of looking at the detail and making decisions and thinking about it, is a perfect way 
or a perfect exercise to do before you dive into doing something like a painting because you're already making a lot of decisions, you're already familiarising yourself with the face. Um, I think a lot of the time if I do do an initial stitch, I, I know when you're very limited in time, I do a lot of portrait sessions where I have got a time limit in life and I also do studies where I don't have a lot of time to develop things so I do tend to rush ahead but I've noticed that when I do have the time to kind of do a little bit of a, a study first and, and kind of pause and look at what I'm looking at, if that makes sense, <laughs> um, to look at the face that I'm that's in front of me and think about things a little bit before I dive ahead and copy that the outcome is so much better. So really smudge back the hair. I don't want it to be too much of a distraction. It did have a lot of rough texture. I was kind of, I guess, thinking about Sargent and some of the drawings that he did where he kind of really smudged out the hair and picked out the highlights. And that's kind of the direction I ended up going in. But once you've got kind of an even smudged out tone, then you can go back in and pull out, you know, add in some more details, some highlights. And it just makes it look a lot more cohesive. So really here I'm trying to decide how I'm going to deal with the mass of hair. It looks like she's had her hair up in a ponytail, so she's got that, the bend of her hair where it goes <clears throat> around her face and then it kind of bounces out and catches the light. So you're trying to decide how I want to capture that, how I want to capture those wispy bits of hair that are spreading over her shoulder. The good thing about hair is you don't have to get it, you, you, all you have to do is get the essence of the hair, you don't have to copy it, copy it exactly, you don't have to capture each hair, you just have to look at it and think about how does it behave as a whole, so how brittle is it, or how soft is it, how much of a curl does it have, those kind of things, you know, how each kind of thick lock of hair, how does that behave and, and draw it almost like it's a ribbon rather than, you know, a bunch of individual hairs. I think that's how you can achieve a good outcome without having to spend loads and loads of time detailing each in single hair. Um, I do when I do see those hyper real drawings where people have spent forever <laughs> kind of doing each individual hair and it you know you end up something that almost looks like a photograph. It's amazing, like the amount of skill it takes is amazing, but oh my goodness, I do not have the patience to do that. So as much as I can you know, if it's something I'm not particularly interested in, like hair, um, that isn't part of my focus, I would rather just a way to shortcut to show it as a whole without having to kind of spend ages developing each individual element. So I really want, you know, for me, hair is like about being, as being as efficient as possible. <laughs> so do the maths of it and then do the flyaways and move on. So this is quite quite cool the close-up of the mouth so I was just observing the way the light was kind of streaming around her mouth um <clears throat> I guess around the side of her mouth on the right hand side of her mouth um all that all that there is in front of the light is just a bit of uh, skin really I guess in between her teeth so actually the light is almost permeating through that and shining through whereas um around the edge of her mouth under her nose it's I guess it's a bit thicker so you're getting less light coming through so just like small elements like that just trying to reflect that in my drawing really kind of zooming right in on the photo and looking at how the light behaves and then rather than just maybe representing it exactly just kind of taking elements of that and reflecting them in my drawing in order to make it seem more realistic you'll see I'm bouncing around a lot at the moment so I'm going up to the hair and getting some of the wispy flyaways and I'm jumping around to different areas so it's like all about zooming out and seeing elements that look like they need a bit more development and then zooming in and just kind of doing those elements so constantly jumping from one area to the other which, seem, which is why it seems a bit disjointed and I guess I'm not talking about all the elements I'm doing right now um, because I'm really just trying to bounce around and pick out elements of areas that need more development to fix. So you notice I've, I've, this has all been on one layer. I've not taken a copy. I, I've not really used undo that much apart from where there's been a brush stroke that's really gone wrong. Um, so this is, you know, this is quite a nice exercise to do when you're not fussing around with layers, you're really building in that depth in a single layer, just like you would with a, you know, if you're doing it in a traditional medium 
while you're building up in charcoal or pencil, you're drawing, you're smudging, you're erasing, you're drawing, you're smudging, you're erasing and repeat and repeat and repeat. And that's how you build up something that really looks quite compelling and nice. So we get quite close to the end here really. I mean, it's just those last tiny refinements. Um, just kind of nailing out the things that really bug me. Yeah, this picture is great. It definitely deserves at least a few different cracks at a study. Maybe I can try one um, with a different background, a darker background, maybe in a traditional medium like oil or charcoal. I think that'd be quite fun. It's a great picture. There's a lot of great pictures in this photo set actually with Casio being backlit. So um, lots of opportunities to kind of play with it. The only problem with the, <clears throat> the monochrome medium is that you lose, you know, when I'm looking at the photograph on the left hand side here, I can see un the, in the shadow under her chin, there's a real warmth in that shadow, like a real orangey, fiery warmth. And the hair is almost orange where it, it's in the light. And you really can't capture that in, as I say, you know, if you, you just got the sepia colour and the white and a combination of both of them you can't really capture that kind of warmth. So I think that's maybe what, what I'd quite like to do this picture again in a different medium, maybe with color to try and capture that. I think it'd be quite fun. So we're coming to the end of the session now. In terms of resources, so I would recommend Bryce Liston's Patreon channel. It costs $1 a month and you get access to loads of great photo references like this one of uh, Kazia. Other references, so my brush set, I use the Jing Sketch Complete Collection, which is a paid brush set. Jing Sketch also does a basic set, which I'll link below. Um, if you're using that, then it, it's for free, and you can use the flat square brush to do the drawing and the erasing, and the jittery smudge to smudge, and you'll get a very similar effect if you wanted to recreate this using free resources. So I hope you found this useful. Um, have a great day. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.